Good morning. Goodbye Forever, Volume 2 by Natchang Rinpoche. Chapter 31, Part 2. The day ended and I returned to my lodgings to have dinner with Amji Pemadorje and Yesha Kandra. They were always delighted to see me and beamed at me, almost as if I was imbued with Dujum Rinpoche. That I had spent this time with a lama who was the living presence of Guru Rinpoche amazed them as much as it amazed me. But I could never really understand why, why they thought any reflected glory emanated from my being his guest. They asked no questions. They regarded anything I would have heard as being entirely beyond them. I did volunteer a few things, such as our discussions of art and savage cabbage. Amji Pemadorje and Yeshe Kandro were clearly astonished that Dujum Rimshe would discuss such subjects and concluded that my deeds must be like the deeds of historical Lama prodigies. I assured them that my life was quite ordinary, but this was deemed impossible if it was of interest to Dujum Rimshe. They could only understand this as humility on my part and so I gave up on the idea of trying to insist that I was nothing special. It seemed that insisting I was not special was just another way of making oneself look special. The only way I could deny being special was to act naturally. I showed the photographs of my family and answered their questions in such a way as to detract from any idea of having exalted origins. I told them how my father had been a dock worker in Gillingham, Kent, and how his parents had been farm workers in Lancashire. But nothing I could say detracted from my being special in their eyes. As far as I was concerned, this simply demonstrated the compassion, wisdom and power of Dujum Rinpoche. The next time I saw Dujum Rinpoche, he continued his explanation of Corde Rushan. In a Corde Rushan, you must be candle visualizing. This is the envisionment of the six cortex locations on the central channel and the soles of the feet. Each locus relates with both dualistic inhibition and non dual potentiality. At each cortex, one envisions the associated seed syllables. With inner corde rusham, the clarification of perceptual obscurations is the preparation for secret corde rusham. This commences with vajra posture. This like dorje looking, Dujam Rimshe asked his attendant Gyurme to demonstrate. This forces body and mind into a state of potentiating tension that exhausts conceptuality. The position is maintained until physical collapse ensues. Then one lies just as one has fallen and remains in non-dual awareness. If namtogs arise from which one feels separate, one repeats the process. Vajra posture engages the physical body in terms of adjusting the currents of psychophysical energy in order to destroy the patterns of referentiality that condition perception. The physical practices of secret Corde Rushan are followed by practices of sound in which the blue seed syllable Hung is vocalised, visualised and infinitely proliferated until the hungs fill existing space. The hungs fill the body and finally implode in space. At the conclusion of each session of visualisation, one assumes a supine position in which one rests in spacious presence. Subsequent to secret Corde Rushan, one arrives at the most secret or ultimate Corde Rushan. Here one employs the seed syllable R in order to enter direct experience in terms of inherent potentiality 
in which all perception is dissolved into the effulgence of light. This is the unified state of luminous awareness, which is beyond the remit of time and space. Dujam Rinpoche presented this in far more detail than given here, with aspects that must remain hidden. But at the end of the day, I was reeling. I had been taken on a journey in which time and space were almost irrelevant coordinates. I was ravenous because we had not stopped for lunch, but I noticed no hunger at all until that point. Now to Amji Pemadorje and Yeshe Kandro must be going, he laughed. Dinner eating necessary. It was strange that it seemed so normal to circumambulate the great Churton at night amongst a throng of Tibetans, all performing their evening kora. In the dark, it could have been any point during the past millennium. There was only the guttering of butter lamps here and there, and the murmur of different mantras and invocations. I began to sing Dorje Tsigden. A few Tibetans on either side recognised what I was singing and joined me. Where else on the planet would this have been possible? The sense of being in home territory was palpable. I wasn't even in Nepal. I was at some point in a continuum that contacted directly with Guru Rinpoche and Yeshit Zogil. The next day was a pivotal day. Dujam Rinpoche told me that it was time to spend a day in retreat. It should preferably be longer, but he knew that my time was limited even with the extension of my visa for the ostensible purposes of trekking. Today we must essential Vajrayana speaking necessary. Time too quickly passing and important Chugyam essential words receiving. Dujam Rinpoche looked at me most intently for a moment, then gave me a broad smile. Not root of phenomena examining, root of mind examining. When root of mind finding, this everything liberating. If root of mind not finding, then success in nothing finding, nothing knowing, nothing knowledge having. When meditating on mind, be relaxed and breathe naturally. Gaze into space. Space is directly before your wide open eyes. This is to look directly into the face of Kuntuzangpo. Strongly invoke the Tsawai Lama as inseparable from Guru Rinpoche and your mind will merge with his. Once settled, you may not remain long in clear awareness. Your mind may move or become restless, and then what is experienced will not be the nature of mind, but Namtog. Do not follow the Namtog, because following Namtog is what will plunge you back into dualism. So break the chain of Namtog, and then you will see awareness. When you see awareness, you will know because it is translucent, uninhibited and elated. It is not circumscribed or delineated by predetermined characteristics. There is nothing of kawa or depa which is not encompassed. It is beginninglessly what you are. It has never been lacking, but it lies beyond the reach of engagement, endeavour and ingenuity. Dujam Rinpoche laughed at this point and asked, But what you are asking is Rigpa recognising. Although you are experiencing, describing not possible. Like when Chögyam young and speech difficulty coming, and in school explaining necessary. Now all very well explaining 
now no speech problem coming. It is not possible to differentiate resting in awareness and the awareness that is experienced. When resting naturally in illimitable awareness, the rapidity of Namtogs loses momentum and they have no sovereignty. They evaporate in the spacious sky of awareness. Dujam Rinpoche looked at me keenly. This awareness now you naturally having. This chukku. State of awareness I am chugyam showing, then recognising. Then self-introduction possible coming. The appearances of kora and depa are merely the display of your own awareness. Rest in this awareness. Waves swell from the sea and sink back into the sea. Clouds emerge from the sky and disperse into the sky. Namtogs arise and dissolve into awareness. Be certain of this dissolution. Find the state that is utterly devoid of meditator and meditation. Some people, when I this saying, no need meditation thinking, but this only first recognising. This is not liberation coming. All lives from beginninglessness, fabricated delusion habits remaining. So meditation must familiar knowing and primordial uncontrived nature resting. Dujan Rinpoche emphasised that meditation had to become spontaneously, naturally, constant presence and asked, how nature of mind remaining? And answered his own question. When Namtog's coming, you must be allowing. You must not Namtog enemies thinking. When Namtog's arising, then in Namtog's relaxing. When Namtog's not arising, then absence Namtog's relaxing. Simply in absence resting. When substantial, elaborate, conceptual patterns appear, it is easy to distinguish them. But when insignificant, intangible movements ensue, it is difficult to apprehend them immediately. This is the undercurrent of conceptual meandering, so it is important to observe carefully. If you can be continuously present in meditation, and post-meditation, when walking, sitting, eating, drinking and sleeping, that is the principal point. If you meditate, you will gain conviction. But if you do not meditate with joy, you will not recognise the natural state. So meditate with resilient joy and signs will appear. Signs will appear that display your familiarity with remaining in the natural state. Then tight, obsessive cohering will gradually loosen. Obsession with the eight worldly dharmas will lessen. Authentic devotion to the Lama and the Lama's instructions will mature. Anxious fixations will evaporate. Diamonds and broken glass will then appear equal. You have stable foundation of devotion and vows having. You strong, joyful endeavour having. You know strong, mundane concerns having. So extraordinary qualities Sogchen naturally arising. This I am seeing. This advice my blood of heart, so close keeping, always. I was to come to see Kyabje Dujan Rinpoche every day whilst I was in Nepal because there was much that he wished to convey. 
this was to be an important time. It was apparent to him that some change was about to occur. Something would transpire quite soon and I would need his guidance and close supervision. An astounding time opened in front of me, like a view arcing the vast sweep of the Himalayas and out into unending space. And that is the final instalment of Goodbye Forever, Volume 2. Um, from next week, we're going to start with readings of An Odd Boy. Um, later on, we'll return to Goodbye Forever with Volume 3 and Volume 4. But uh, first of all, we're going to have The Odd Boy, Volume 1. So we'll start next week and that will be uh, three readings a week of An Odd Boy. And these recordings of Goodbye Forever, Volume 2, will be available shortly on Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify, and iTunes, and online. So we'll uh, make sure that the links for that are posted.